welcome back to another edition of JD's Top 8 here on JD's YouTube. Uh, today's Top 8 will prove that I have read books. <laughs> Shut up, Chris. Um, so, we are going to read these, uh, do this list, and yes, all of these are from ones I had to read in high school. Uh, these are ones I enjoyed and did, just didn't go to like Wikipedia or Google. <laughs> um, coming at number eight is Romeo and Juliet. I really like uh, Shakespeare's stuff. Romeo and Juliet is about star-crossed lovers who weren't supposed to be together, who ended up getting together, and because of that, they both ended up dying. Um, what I find really funny and interesting in this, and now looking back at this, uh, first of all, this was all caused by miscommunication and perspective. Uh, nobody decided to talk to each other. They just were like, oh, we're enemies, so we're enemies. So our children are going to hate our each other, and we can't be adults about this. They also refused to look at it through anybody else's eyes. Um, they refused to see stuff. They were stubborn. And they got their children killed. Which then eventually led them to squashing everything. But I think the cost was a little bit too much. Oh, and how the fact that Romeo is in love at the beginning of the book. And then just like, oh, okay, I'm over it. Kind of like all of high school. Uh, seven is um, seven is Hamlet, the Lion King stole from. Uh, <laughs> it is about a it's about Hamlet's uncle killing his father, taking the throne. Um, Hamlet has to come back and confront him. There is some weird stuff in there, like Hamlet and his mom getting it on. That was never in Lion King. Uh, the debate whether to kill oneself is in the book. It's pretty heavy and dark stuff. Uh, again, both of those both of those books are still referenced today, still used today in ideas and concepts. Number six is the Odyssey. This happens to take place after the Trojan War. Um, we get to venture take venture on the way back home. Uh, Poseidon doesn't like. Uh, it's been a while. Poseidon gets mad, and it takes um, takes him ten years to get home. And it's just wicked adventures. There's Cyclops. I love anything to do with um, with Roman and Greek mythology. Mythology in general, you know. With the gods and goddesses. All that stuff fascinates me. I'm outsmarting the Cyclops. Uh, the sisters. It is... It's really good. Um, coming in at number five is Lord of the Flies. Uh, this is about a plane wreck where it is a group of boys who get stranded on an island. Uh, two groups veer off, one being savages and one trying to uh, make peace and live together and communicate. Um, this is a, this matches society. Uh, this is what you know, we have two instincts, you know, primal instinct or, you know, our, our more peaceful civil side, our, our, uh, our wild and aggressive or our um, calm and nurturing. And they clash. Um, just FYI, yes, I've seen Roma and Juliet, the movie. Yes, I've seen Hamlet. Yes, I seen the Odyssey. Um, they showed these after English class. Yes, I seen Lord of the Rings. 
Or the Lord of the Rings. Lord of Flies. Oh my lord. Um. Yeah, looking at it now, I think I've watched movies for all of these. Uh, we usually read the book and then we take a couple days to watch the movie. Four is Rainmaker. I was in business class, uh, business law when we read this, and it's fantastic. And it's about a a guy who's just graduating and getting ready to get on to, or ready to get past the bar, ready to get his his license. Um, he ends up working. He ends up working for a firm. Um, he ends up leaving the firm. It was a big firm, and then he ends up working for a uh, what they call a uh, ambulance chaser. It is somebody who usually follows ambulance. Really, ambulance chaser. Uh, this is a term given to people, lawyers, who call ambulances and then they show up in your room and are like, oh, if you're involved in an accident, I'm your man. Those kind of people. And just working for him, um, he ends up doing this really big case against this really big law firm uh, for this poor people. Um, the term rainmaker is a term in... In business law, it is a term in um, law offices. It's a person who brings in that big giant settlement. Um, that's what rainmaker is. Rain, get it, money. So whoever can bring in that huge cash uh, case is the rainmaker. Uh, three is to. Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, this one really sat with me. It is set back. Now, I did watch the movie in black and white. It is a very, very, it's a great novel. It is a great movie. It's about uh, the South and the lawyer standing up for an innocent black man. Um, what happens with him and his family because he's standing up for this black man and a time where ignorance was at its peak. Um, don't get me wrong, there's still ignorance in this world. There will always still be evil and stupid and corrupt people. But this touched on the subject back in this back in the day when it wasn't really talked about. It was mumbled, but this really hit it. Um, there was a few movies like this, a few movies, a few books that really made you stop and think. Uh, number two is one I liked back then. Um, I didn't think it could come to fruition, but it's starting to. It is Fahrenheit 451. That is the temperature at what bur which books burn. Um, the whole concept is to burn all the books and make people stop reading. Um, everybody has the same ideas, everybody runs the same way, the censorship. Um, that's what's happening today. You cannot have a difference of opinion. It doesn't matter what side you are. With social media and everything going on today, it seems like everybody pinpoints your opinion, and if they have a problem with it, they'll beat it down. Um, we've already had books taken out of schools. We've already had books taken out of libraries because of certain content. I know that Huckleberry Finn has been taken out of schools. Uh, there's a long list that just, it keeps getting worse and worse. We are telling our children that these literatures exist, but you cannot read, not here. Come on, that's, now we're pushing, we're pushing the dictatorship. We're pushing getting rid of people's rights, man. It is my right to write what I want. It is the consumer's right to read what they want, to consume what they want. There's a whole beautiful um, foundation around this country. Immigrants came to this country to make themselves a better life, not come to this country to be told that they can and cannot do certain things. That's what they ran away from. And that works on all sides of the government. The government really cracks down. I find it, I know I'm getting off on a tangent, I find it really funny that we have sides in the American public, yet they're created by government officials. Like if we just stop and 
gathered together, we would run the government. But the government knew that. The government knew that a long time ago. There's always been a thing the government's brought forward to split the American people. Oh, Trump is not our president. Oh, yes, he is. Funny thing to think about that is not too long ago, Trump was supporting the Clintons. Trump was in their, was their pocket. Like, we forget that. I find it really funny. I think that they sat down and went, oh, this is the year. Um, we want Hillary to win. Uh, Obama won twice, so we're probably not going to win. So let's have her run up against the most unlikely candidate. Somebody who will not win. That's what I think happened. Because you have a person who jumped sides. Like, he, over the years he changed. And that's fine. You can change your beliefs. But it is all a part of the system to keep us separated. They throw big issues at us, and they go, here you go. It's like uh, starving dogs, and then throwing a raw piece of meat in between, and seeing which one gets it. Like, they're going to tear each other apart, and that's what we're doing. We're tearing each other apart because of beliefs. Anyways, getting off on a tangent. Uh, number one is The Great Gatsby. When I read this, I really enjoyed it. Uh, this man made himself... To be huge, uh, he had class, he had style. Uh, we were learning in English about colorism, I think that's what it's called. Finding color and uh, knowing what the meaning is, why the author put that color there. Um, I really have a thing about color. Green is, like right now I'm looking at grass, grass is green, life tends to be green. But on the other side, it's also greed. It's the color of money. Uh, red. Red is my favorite because it is passion. And passion on both sides. It is hate and love. All mixed up into one color. Um, and that's usually what I tend to relate with because I'm a passionate person. So when I'm really enjoying something, I'm really enjoying it, and when I really want to stand up for something, I really have that fire, that drive to stand up for it, you know? So, yes. Um, and I watched the movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. I think they picked a really good guy to play the lead role, and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I enjoyed talking to you today. <laughs> Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, leave a comment, let me know how I'm doing. That being said, gotta turn my little clicker on. Much love, JD out.